Hi Ray Lovers, on the Railways Explained so far, we made several videos relating to the area of the United Kingdom. They are dedicated to the construction of the Channel Tunnel, projects High Speed 1 and High Speed 2, and even there was one comprehensive video about the Elizabeth Line. Today we are talking about a project with an exciting name, the Northern Powerhouse Rail. This project represents a counterweight to all earlier mentioned UK projects, which are primarily related to the southern part of the country. The Northern Powerhouse Rail is a proposal that aims not only to improve the railway service, but to become a trigger to boost the economic development of the Northern England. As always in similar videos, we will start with the background of the project and rationale. The north of England is home to around 16 million people, almost a quarter of the UK's population. In addition, in this part of England there are 1.1 million businesses and about 7.1 million jobs. Its economy generated £423.8 billion in GDP in 2019, almost a fifth of the total for the UK. But regardless of these contributions, historically, the northern part of England has received less investments in transport infrastructure than other regions. According to an analysis conducted by the Institute for Public Policy Research from 2009 and 10 to 2019 and 20, transport spending in the north was at £349 per person. This is below the UK average of £430 per person and more than twice lower than in London. Average transport spending in London in the same period was £864 per person. Over the last decade, many proposals have been made to upgrade the rail network across the north of England, with different names attached. Initially, there was talk of High Speed 3, a new high speed line across the Pennines from Manchester to Leeds. But the trigger for starting this initiative was a speech given at the Manchester Museum of Science and Industry by the incumbent Chancellor of Exchequer, George Osborne, in June 2014. Osborne proposed a high-speed rail link between Leeds and Manchester. The line would utilize the existing route between these two cities with additional tunnels and other infrastructure. Initial reactions to the proposal were mixed. Some thought this proposal was just an attempt to grab a more significant number of voters bearing in mind that in 2015 a general election was expected. Some others believe that the planners should consider this proposal more profoundly and try to connect the northern cities with some form of high-capacity service. In support of this proposal and with some pressure on the centralized Department for Transport, in August 2014 and 2015, an alliance of six city councils, Leeds, Liverpool, Hull, Manchester, Newcastle-upon-Tyne and Sheffield, unveiled an initial regional transport plan linking their cities, called One North. Also, the company managing the HS2 construction project, HS2 Limited, published a report called Rebalancing Britain in October 2014. That report recognized the need to improve east-west transportation links in northern England. Therefore, the Transport Secretariat at the time announced plans to create a new sub-national transport body called Transport for the North to allow the North to speak with one voice on the big decisions, to benefit the region as a whole. TFN, as a sub-national transport body, was formed at the end of 2014. Since then, it is responsible for prioritizing and planning long-term strategic transport investments across the Northern England. TFN's board comprises 20 local transport authorities and 11 local enterprise partnerships representing the Northern England. Since the formation of this institution, the railway development program has been jointly developed, including the support from Network Rail and HS2 Limited. The government and TFN first set out their development vision in 2015 as part of their Northern Transport Strategy. This proposal extended beyond HS3 to encompass a more comprehensive network of connections between cities in the north of England, which began to coalesce around the idea of the Northern Powerhouse the government's vision for a super-connected, globally competitive northern economy. Hence the name Northern Powerhouse Rail. 
the developed concept aimed to use investments in rail infrastructure to radically improve journey times and frequencies between major regional cities, including faster journeys between Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds, Sheffield, Newcastle and Hull. In March 2019, TFN submitted a strategic outline business case to the government containing options for NPR, which the government considered when taking its final decision on the NPR network. It included three options. A final NPR strategy was agreed upon by all stakeholders in 2021, and it set out a vision of new and upgraded north-south and east-west rail connections across the north. It includes a new line between Liverpool and Manchester via central Warrington, upgrades and journey time improvements between Manchester and Sheffield, a new line between Manchester and Leeds via a new station in central Bradford, upgrades to the East Coast mainline between Leeds and Newcastle, upgrades and electrification between Leeds and Hull and Leeds and Sheffield, and connection of Sheffield to the HS2 Eastern Leg and Leeds. In our video about the HS2 project, we talked about the commissioning and Douglas Oakery, who in August 2019, as the former chair of HS2 Limited and Crossrail, reviewed whether and how to proceed with HS2. The so-called Oakery Review was published in February 2020. This report recommended that the government should proceed with both HS2 and NPR, Still, it suggested that the government should develop a study to inform an integrated plan along with an integrated railway investment program for the Midlands and the North. The aim was to decide how to phase Northern Powerhouse and Phase 2B of HS2, but also other rail projects in the North. Therefore, in November 2021, the government published its integrated rail plan for the North and the Midlands. The IRP introduced significantly scaled-back plans for NPR compared to TFN's preferred vision, including rejection of the proposal for a new high-speed line between Manchester and Leeds via a new central station in Bradford. In addition to the options proposed by TFN, the government examined a range of alternatives for improving rail connections between cities in the north, including upgrades to the existing network. The table on the screen summarizes the cost, schedule and value for money of some of the different options the government considered, with highlighted preferred option, both by TFN and UK government. With its preferred option, the government confirmed its intention to connect Liverpool, West Yorkshire and Greater Manchester. The plan reasons that these are three largest economic areas in the north, where unifying labor markets will create new jobs and business opportunities. This core package includes the following. 40 miles of new high-speed line on the Liverpool-York route between Warrington, Manchester and as far as Standage in Yorkshire, with upgraded and electrified lines along the rest of the route. Then we have upgrades and electrification of the Leeds-Bradford section of the Calder Valley line and electrification of the Leeds York route, digital signaling and significantly longer sections of 3 and 4 tracking. This will now form the first phase of NPR. Also, the government criticized TFN's options for new build lines, suggesting these proposals were not well integrated into the rest of the rail network, especially with the Transpanine route upgrade, a multi-billion pound project, to electrify and upgrade the existing line between Manchester and York via Leeds and Huddersfield. In the IRP, the government argues that the core NPR network will deliver similar outputs in the Manchester-Liverpool and Manchester-Leeds corridors to TFN's preferred option, but at a lower cost, accelerating some improvements. As you could see in the table, some NPR services started to run this decade. However, the time frame means most improvements are still scheduled for delivery in the 2030s and 2040s, with the transformational benefits to be realized by 2050. The core NPR network is now part of the £96.4 billion IRP pipeline, which includes £17.2 billion for the NPR core Liverpool-York route, and £5.4 billion for the Transpanine route upgrade, including full electrification. 
but we have to point out that the Transport Select Committee arrived at an inquiry into the IRP at the end of 2022. Namely, this committee exists to examine the expenditure, administration and policy of the Department for Transport and its associated public bodies. The committee came to the conclusion that the government's £96 billion rail investment plan will, quote, reduce the prospects of meeting ambitions for the North by limiting the vital capacity needed for growth. The Transport Select Committee report also says that the government must carry out a full benefit-cost ratio analysis for options 2 and 3, which propose building an entirely new high-speed line from Leeds to Manchester and a new station at Bradford. Northern Powerhouse Rail is still at an early stage, which means the scheme's costs are subject to a lot of uncertainty. According to 2019 prices, the project's total value is around £17.2 billion. The UK government believes that the proposal defined in the IRP will enable it to deliver comparable journey times to TFN's preferred option for £18 billion less. The table on the screen shows the comparative values of the train service on the major corridors in the north and the savings the modernized railway infrastructure will bring concerning traffic performance in 2019. As you can see, both options would bring significant savings in travel time compared to the status quo and an increase in infrastructure capacity. But comparing just those two options, the most crucial difference would be on the Manchester to Sheffield corridor where NPR would offer a 15-minute faster journey and one more train per hour. On other corridors, the difference is 10 minutes or less. Suppose we put it in the context of achieving savings of at least 18 billion. In that case, we certainly understand the UK government's decision on this matter. Of course, we also understand TFN's opinion because it's not all about faster travel. Still, there is also something about better connections and extra capacity as an economic trigger that their option would bring in connecting all industrial powerhouses in the north. According to a recent study by Be The Best Communications, the six worst connected major cities in the UK are in the north and midlands, with Bradford performing worse due to a lack of direct routes and slow connections. Liverpool and Hull are also in the top five worst performing cities underlying the poor state of east-west regional connectivity. In general, intercity train journey times and frequencies in the north compare poorly against similar journeys in southeast England and comparative international journeys. Several problems need to be overcome to implement this project. The first is undoubtedly of political nature. The now former Prime Minister Boris Johnson supported this project, but there were specific changes with his departure. During the campaign for the new Prime Minister, Liz Truss promised to enable the construction of the NPR network in full, meaning the construction of a newly electrified line from Liverpool to Hull with a stop in Bradford. Representatives of TFN and other authorities from the north, especially representatives of Bradford, saw this as a positive step forward. But this positive environment lasted less than iceberg lettuce since Liz Truss was in the office from September 6 to October 25th, and thus became the shortest serving Prime Minister in British history. She was succeeded by Rishi Sunak, previously a senior minister of the Crown within the Government of the United Kingdom and head of His Majesty's Treasury. Bearing in mind that he was responsible for developing and executing the government's public finance and economic policy, it should not be surprising that the across-the-board review of the major infrastructure projects found ways to plug the hole in the public finances. According to the latest information, Rishi Sunak will not take on the additional commitments made by Liz Truss. He told the Financial Times that he is reversing her promise to fully build the Northern Powerhouse Rail. This has left stakeholders in the North furious at what they see as an abandonment of the government's own leveling up agenda, a manifesto commitment to improve the economic performance of areas outside the overheated London and South East. In addition to this, there is a lot that needs to happen before construction can begin. 
For example, works to refine and assess the viable options, including a more detailed analysis of the costs and benefits, as well as a consideration of the commercial aspects of the scheme, together with procurement strategies and the roles and responsibilities of different organizations involved, and how the strategic benefits will be realized. Where new high-speed lines are being built, legal authorization, including planning consent, has typically been granted using hybrid bills. Namely, these bills are used because they authorize works at a local level, that is, in this case, the construction of new railway lines, which are of national importance. Hybrid bills, for example, have been used to authorize HS2, Crossrail and the Channel Tunnel. However, gaining parliamentary approval for these bills can take a few years. Hybrid bills used to authorize major rail projects and provided powers to facilitate the compulsory purchase of land and property needed for the route. Following parliamentary approval, land and property along the line need to be acquired before construction can begin. So, how could this project be briefly described? On, off, on and currently off. Again, this project makes sense in the context of finding a regional balance and implementing the leveling strategy by introducing efficient railway connections in the north. However, time will tell what the epilogue will be. Before the end, we would like to thank all our patrons for their generous support. If you want to support Railways Explained 2, you can do it directly on Patreon or you can buy some cool railway stuff in our online store. Check out the links in the description. If you cannot support us in this way, simply hit that subscribe button and become part of the Railways Explained community. In the following video, we go to the colder parts of Europe. We will talk about an initiative that includes the construction of a railway in the Arctic. Therefore, prepare warm jackets, hats and gloves. But until then, take care and goodbye.